Guitar players ask me all the time, Tom Hess, what's the best way to hold the guitar pick? Or how do I hold the pick the right way? Well, today I'm gonna show you the right way to hold the guitar pick. And I'll also show you why I think this is indeed the best way. But don't simply take my word for it. Let's go through the list of elements that are important in determining how to hold the pick the right way. Now, once you really understand everything that goes into the right picking grip, you'll see for yourself what the best way to hold the pick actually is. All right, if you're sitting near a desk, if you have a pen anywhere near you, put the pen in front of you on the table, on a desk, just put it flat on the desk. Now, with two fingers and two fingers only, pick up that pen. Just the normal way you just pick it up off the table. How are you gonna pick it up? Probably like this, right? The pen's laying here, and you're just gonna pick it up, and you're gonna hold it like that. That is exactly the way that I hold the guitar pick. That's exactly the way I recommend everybody hold the guitar pick, and I'm gonna show you exactly why I think this grip is better than this grip, the way that many people hold the pick. They kind of lay it on the side of their first finger, and then they, with their thumb, they kind of clamp down like this, okay? Well, we want to pick up, or hold the pick in the same way you would pick up a pen, and I'm gonna give you a whole bunch of reasons why I think that's better, okay? So we're just simply holding it like this, okay? You can see from this angle, you can see from this angle. Now, why do I think that holding the pick this way is the best way to hold the pick? Well, for one thing, if you hold the pick on the side of your index finger and then take your thumb and clamp it down, that will take the edge or the tip of your thumb will often lead beyond the edge of the pick. It'll hang over the edge of the pick, the edge of the pick that you're playing with, okay? Now, you can play guitar that way. The thumb can hang over the edge, but if it does, there will be some things you will not be able to do on the guitar. And the main thing, the main restriction you'll have is you will never be able to use a critical muting technique called thumb muting, where the thumb mutes the lower strings on the guitar the ones on this side of the pick to keep everything perfectly quiet. Now I realize you may not be using thumb muting right now. You might be using your palm in order to kind of keep the lower strings quiet as you play. So if you're playing on the G string, you might be using your palm to kind of mute strings four, five, and six. And you can do that if you want to, but if you use your thumb, the mute will be much more secure because strings don't vibrate very much down here where your palm would be. So your palm on this part of the string is limited in its ability to keep the strings quiet. Now it can be done, but it's a little bit harder. When you mute with your thumb, the mute on these lower strings is 100%. Those strings are gonna be quiet 100% of the time as long as that thumb is in contact with the strings. Okay, so it's a more secure mute. The other, th the other advantage of thumb muting is that it forces the pick to travel this way in the same plane that the strings are in and not on angles one way or the other. Okay, so it's another advantage is that it keeps the pick attack in line with the plane of the strings. So the point is that when your thumb hangs over the edge of the pick, like you see here, you will not be able to do thumb muting at all because the thumb will then mute the very string you're trying to pick. Now, we don't want that to happen, all right? So assuming that you don't want to muffle the sound of the strings you're trying to, to actually play, the thumb needs to be behind the edge. Then you can use thumb muting and you won't have any problems getting uh, the pick, the, the articulation of the, the pick attack to be very clean, very crisp, very clear, very strong, but not be muted by the thumb while doing thumb muting.
The next reason why I believe that holding the guitar pick this way is best is because when you hold the pick on the side of your first finger and then you just clamp down like this, the side of your first finger has very few nerve endings compared to near the tip of the finger, you have a lot of nerve endings. Why does this matter? It matters because when you're playing guitar, particularly at high speeds, your brain is receiving feedback from the nerves of your thumb and your index finger, whether it's happening here or happening here. Now, because you have more nerve endings here than you do here, there's, there's the highway of you know, feedback through your nerves is bigger, it's greater, when the tip of the, of the finger, or at least the side of the tip of the finger is involved, compared to over here, there's not a lot of, um, of nerve endings there. So your brain needs that feedback because it helps you know exactly where the pick is and what the pick is doing at all times. And that's really important, particularly when you are training yourself to play at high speeds and to keep everything accurate in terms of the right hand. People who hold their guitar this way sometimes say, well, the pick feels more secure in their hand because there's a bigger surface area from which the thumb can clamp down. So the pick just feels more secure. It doesn't move around. The pick doesn't flop around. So that's one of the reasons why they prefer that pick grip. My response to that is, if you hold the pick like this and that pick starts flopping around, moving in your hand, something is wrong, okay? Something is definitely wrong. The pick should not be turning. It should not be loose. It should not be falling on the floor. It sh you should not be losing your grip, okay? I mean, the amount of times that I've ever dropped a pick, even while playing on stage at shows or whatever, maybe once in my life has that ever happened where I've, where I've dropped the pick and lost control of it, okay? So if, if you have the right grip and you match the grip, the, the, the amount of squeezing of the pick to the articulation, how hard you're hitting the notes, when that matches, that pick's not going to go anywhere. It's not going to fall out of your hand. It's not going to go like this or anything weird like that. So there's really no advantage to holding it this way in terms of security unless you're doing something wrong with how you're holding the pick. Then if, you're, if you've got an error in the technique or the grip, then maybe this technique would, this way of holding the pick would give you a little bit more security. But if we just simply fix the technique, you won't need that. Now, another reason why some people say when they hold the pick this way that they prefer this is because they feel it gives them very strong, powerful articulation. Well, that's usually true. You usually can get a very good, strong articulation holding the pick this way. But guess what? You can also get equally as strong, just as strong articulation and power holding the pick this way. The pick's not going to flop out of your hands, okay? Everything's going to be fine. It's going to be beautiful, okay? You're gonna, you can play just as strong, just as fast, just as whatever, holding it this way as you can holding it this way. So there's no advantage for articulation or for stability, assuming you've got the right technique. Another reason why I think that holding the pick this way is better than holding it this way is tension. Now, maybe you've played guitar before and when you play, you start experiencing some kind of tension, maybe in your picking hand thumb, maybe in the wrist of the picking hand or somewhere else in the hand when you play guitar, particularly when you start playing really fast, you might sense a, some additional excessive tension. Well, there can be many different reasons why that tension is there. Uh, but one of the reasons that I find is that when people hold their pick on the side of the first finger, they're more likely to experience excessive tension and fatigue compared to the people who hold it this way. Now, how would I know that? Well, I've taught thousands and thousands of guitar students, and some insist on holding their pick this way 
despite me trying to get them not to stop doing that, and others have hold the pick this way as I've instructed. And more of the people who experience tension percentage-wise in their hand are holding the pick this way. Now, why would this cause more tension typically than this? Well, because the first finger, when you hold the, when the pick is lying on the side of the first finger, okay, the first finger can't help to hold the pick. It's not really helping. It's just dead weight here. The only thing that's really helping to secure the pick is the thumb, okay? So you've got one finger doing all the work to keep the pick uh, in control. The, the rest of it is, you know, it's an inanimate object at that point, okay? When you hold the pick this way, two things are different. Yes, the surface area is smaller on the tip of the finger versus the side of the finger. That is true. However, you've got grip on both sides of the pick. You have no grip on both sides of the pick when you do this. The grip is only here on the thumb. There's no gripping happening here. This finger is pushing the pick into the side of the finger. The first finger can't help. It's just lying there, okay? When you do this, the amount of force required from the thumb is substantially less. That means that you don't need to grip it as hard. And when you grip it less hard, the amount of tension that is caused from that grip is drastically reduced. Okay, so this is one of the big reasons why holding it this way can reduce at least some of the tension in the picking hand. Now, I realize that the pick grip is not the only thing that can cause excessive tension in the picking hand, the wrist, the forearm, etc. There can be other causes besides the grip itself, but the grip, when it's gripped harder than necessary because this finger cannot help, is going, when that happens, you're only going to add to whatever other tension elements are there and therefore more likely to raise the tension level. And we don't want that. We want the hands and the arms and the wrists to stay relaxed. So holding the pick this way will help you to reduce some of the tension in the picking hand. The next advantage of holding the pick this way is spatial awareness. I think that when you hold the pick this way, you know exactly where the pick is in space relative to the guitar than one might when holding the pick this way. Now, if you've been holding your guitar pick this way for many, many, many years, and you're experienced, you know where the pick is, right? If you put your hand on the guitar, you know what string uh, the pick is, is near, okay? Because you have experience there. So that makes sense that you might be saying, well, I don't have any problems knowing where the pick is in space. My spatial awareness is just fine, even though I'm holding the pick this way. And that may be true for you. But for people starting out who have not yet developed and mastered that spatial awareness, no matter how they're holding the pick, it's much easier for a new player, an inexperienced player, to get that spatial awareness faster when they know where the pick is when they're doing this. See, when you do this, and we're talking about for someone starting out now, not playing very long, it's harder with this grip to know exactly, to feel intuitively exactly where is the pick without having to look down or play a note to verify. When you do this, even without the pick in your hand, you know exactly where your hand is, okay? So it's easier, I think, to develop that spatial awareness with this grip than it is with this grip. Again, it can be done with either grip, but if you're learning or you're teaching someone else to learn, I think they're going to be able to master this faster with this grip than with this one. Before we go any further, I've got another video here on YouTube that you might really want to check out about mastering guitar technique and the process used to answer whatever questions you might have about how to hold your hands, how the picking motions should be, where you should place your thumb, you know, all of those sorts of things. It's a great video. It applies to the topic of holding the pick, and it applies to everything from the left hand positioning to the right hand, and all kinds of other questions you may have. 
The next reason why I think that holding the guitar pick this way is better than holding it this way is pick control. Now, when I say pick control, I'm not referring to your ability to control the pick from not moving or dropping it on the floor or having it turn. I'm not talking about pick control in that sense. I'm talking about being able to control the pick with its motions, okay? When you hold the pick this way on the side of your first finger and you do a downstroke, what is happening? You've got the finger that is making the grip pushing the pick against the side of the finger that is not helping. It's just dead weight here on the downstroke. Then when you pick with an upstroke, what's happening? You're using dead weight to, in the weight of your arm to come up and push the string into the finger that's doing the gripping. That's one of the big reasons why when people hold their guitar pick this way, they experience a sensation where downstrokes feel strong, solid, secure, and accented, and upstrokes generally feel less accented. They might sound or feel or actually be less powerful. So very often, you'll, you know, guys are picking this way, on the side of the first finger, they really feel the power of the downstrokes, but the upstrokes always feel and sound a little weaker. Why is that happening? Well, if you ask them, they might say, well, let's see, uh, when you pick down, you're using gravity. No, it's not gravity, because if we would tie up your feet and hang you upside down and give you a guitar and say, play, and then now the downstrokes are going up in the air because you're upside down. Those downstrokes would still be heavier even though gravity is going against you. Okay, so that gravity ain't the reason why people sometimes feel the downstrokes are stronger. Okay, it's because the finger that's doing the gripping is pushing the pick through dead weight and it feels strong. Upstrokes, it's the opposite. The finger grips. So you're trying to move the pick this way opposite of the finger that's gripping. That's why upstrokes feel weak to you if they do and if you're picking that way. But when you hold the pick this way, you don't have one finger pushing the pick through dead weight. You have both fingers equally gripping, actively gripping the pick. So downstrokes feel strong because they are, and upstrokes also feel strong because they are, because this finger is a gripping finger now. It's not dead weight, okay? And this finger is gripping less. It doesn't need to grip as hard in holding the pick this way as it does when you hold the pick this way. So you're not having to overcome the power of the strong gripping of the thumb as you come up. So downstrokes and upstrokes with practice will begin to feel more equal to you holding it this way than they likely will holding the pick this way. Now, you might think, well, I like the sound of my downstrokes being accented and my upstrokes being unaccented. Okay, that might sound cool in certain situations, but what happens if you're playing triplets? What happens if the phrase you're playing doesn't start on a strong beat? What if it starts on the end of a beat or somewhere else on a weak part of the measure? What happens if you're playing an odd meter? What happens if the phrase is syncopated? What happens if you simply don't want the sound of every single time you play, downstrokes sound more accented than upstrokes? What happens if you want to do anything else than sound like a machine like that? Okay, well, then you have to overcome what you perceive to be a natural downstroke accent. We don't want to have to overcome that. We want you, I assume you want to, you want to make accents wherever you want them to be, not where your hand naturally does them. If you want to accent on a downstroke, great, accent on a downstroke. You want to accent on an upstroke, have the skill to be able to do that automatically and not have it feel weird or hard or like you don't really totally control the pick as well. So that's what I mean when I say pick, pick control, in my opinion, is better when holding the pick this way, between the thumb 
and the index finger closer to the tip. It's not exactly on the tip, but it's close to the tip, a little bit off center, okay? Greater pick control. That's another reason why I think this is the right way to hold a guitar pick. So I just told you all the reasons why I believe this is the correct way to hold the guitar pick. If you disagree, if you think I'm wrong, I'd love to hear it. Tell me in the comments. Give me the reasons why. Give me the evidence, the ABC, the reasons, the elements, why holding the pick some other way is better. Hey, I've got an open mind. Maybe you'll convince me. But so far, I'm pretty sure this is the right way to hold the pick. If you can prove me wrong, I welcome it. Now I created today's video because one of you requested it on YouTube. So if you want me to create other videos on the topics you want to hear about, let me know in the comments. I read them all and that's where I often look for new video ideas for you guys. If you like my videos on YouTube, you'll love my personalized breakthrough guitar lessons. I'm going to show you exactly how to transform your guitar playing from being just sort of okay or pretty good to being really awesome. Even if you feel stuck right now with your playing or are having some self-doubts. So imagine how much better your guitar playing will become when you know exactly what to do and exactly how to practice. And you have the guidance and roadmap to get you there. I've done this for thousands of people over the years all around the world. Now, if you're willing to do the work, if you're going to follow what I teach you, follow what I'm telling you to do, and if you practice at least 30 minutes a day on the stuff that I teach you, I'm absolutely certain I can help you become the guitar player you want to be. Now, unlike other lessons out there on the internet, you're not going to get a bunch of generic cookie cutter lessons from me. You get lessons customized to you who you are, what your goals are, your challenges, your strengths, your weaknesses, your learning style, experience, frustrations, and most importantly, who you want to become as a guitar player. So check out my Breakthrough Guitar Lessons at tomhess.net forward slash guitar and see if they're right for you. I'll see you on the other side.